So our new study of geoengineering, what we've done first of all is had a look at the observational record of um, volcanoes and how they impact uh, the Sahelian precipitation. So the Sahel is the area of uh, sub-Saharan Africa just to the south of the equator, just to the south of the, of the Sahara Desert. It's one of the most vulnerable areas in the world as, as is well documented by the, the uh, droughts that occurred there in the 1970s and 1980s. What we found was in the years immediately after the volcanic eruptions that had gone primarily into the northern hemisphere was that there's a significant impact on Sahelian drought. Um, so that's the first part of the study concentrates on that. We then um, simulate these uh, volcanic eruptions using our state-of-the-art climate model. And we find that, that the climate model, although it doesn't actually capture the magnitude of the, the precipitation, the absolute uh, precipitation quite right, it rather undoes it, there's definitely a signal there that is, is well distinguishable. So you can say um, that our climate models are able to reproduce uh, these observations of the impact of volcanoes on the Sahelian precipitation. Obviously, um, the Met Office isn't in the business of being able to forecast when a volcanic eruption goes off. But what we have been able to do and establish with this study is that when a volcano does go off in the Northern Hemisphere, if it's of su uh, sufficient magnitude, then we can predict that there's going to be Sahelian drought. Now that's got tremendous benefit for aid agencies. The second thing that the study investigates is uh, the impact of solar radiation management geoengineering. So basically deliberately um, squirting um, sulfur dioxide into either the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere stratosphere, um, basically to counterbalance uh, global warming and what the side effects of that would be. Essentially we find the same thing as, as we found for volcanoes. If you uh, inject into the northern hemisphere, then um, you will induce uh, drought in the, Sahel, in the Sahel. If you inject into the southern hemisphere, you can induce a significant greening of the Sahel. In fact, you can get a, a huge increase in the uh, net primary productivity, which is basically the um, plant biomass, if you like, which has got considerable benefits, obviously, to the Sah Sahelian region. However, you can't take um, the Sahel just as uh, just by itself, if you like, although it is one of the most vulnerable areas in, in the world. If you inject into the southern hemisphere to induce a Sahelian greening, you actually move the entire ITCZ, which is the intertropical convergence zone, which is basically all the, where the monsoon rains come from. You move that up to the north, um, so although you're, you're now um, uh, producing more rain over the Sahel, you're actually moving it away from uh, the Amazon and the Nordeste region of Brazil. So you end up with these winners and losers. And of course, that uh, um, makes the whole geoengineering issue, with, particularly with solar radiation management, an extremely uh, complex and emotive subject. The Met Office is not looking to endorse or promote geoengineering in any way. What it's trying to do is provide an objective unbiased and unpartisan assessment of the impacts of these geoengineering schemes if anyone were to potentially go and deploy them in the real world.